Hi VC, it's Rob here with another video and uh, in the background on the wall I've got a copy of What App by The Beat a bit of a tribute to Rankin Roger who uh, sadly passed away last week The Beat were one of my favourite bands in the early 80s and uh, to die at such an early age, 56 um, yeah, really sad news so yeah now, in the background we've got playing Kelly and Trick reviewed this last week so I uh, thought I'd have it on in the background and see what you think of it. Now, um, a week ago I went to a record fair in a place called Northwich. So I was in work in the morning, tie loose, a few loose ends up and uh, drove over to Northwich. It was a chilly day and uh, I was a bit shocked when I got there, I was outside and uh, there wasn't many sellers there only about four, but there were plenty of vinyl. A guy called Steve there, who uh, I know pretty well, and he's always got good stuff, so I uh, bought a bit of stuff from Steve. And the first album I picked up was this one. Yeah, The Beatles. And Yesterday and Today. And this is a Canadian import, a sealed copy, only cost me 12 pounds. I mean, I'm having a bit of a Beatles renaissance at the moment. Um, I think it's since Matt Hayes got me the uh, White Album, VCLT, thanks Matt. I need to review that album because, uh, tell you now, I love that album. And uh, it's made me have a little bit of a look at, for more Beatles stuff and uh, picked a bit of stuff up recently. So uh, more than happy to pick this up for £12. The Beatles. Now, pick this album up. Mink Deville and Cabaretta. Now, Mink Deville to me, in 1977, I was starting to get singles um, at a fast rate, really, and uh, Spanish Stroll, when it came out, was um, one of my favorites. It was a bit out of place, really, because it wasn't new wave, it wasn't punk, it was just a great single. And uh, I wanted to put it in my One Hit Wonders chart the other week, but I couldn't find my copy of it, a bit annoying. So, uh, I mean, this album got really good reviews when it came out. Um, I think the problem with it is it didn't really fit into the time. Um, pretty similar to kind of Dots of Feel Good, um, Rock Pile, that kind of thing. I mean, Willie DeVille, um, the singer, he uh, sadly passed away, uh, age 58, in 2009. I mean, he had a bit of a checkered life, uh, moved to... Um, Greenwich Village when he was about 14 he got involved in uh, a lot of petty crime but rock and roll saved him and um, this band um, they were around for years I mean they were still touring in Europe and doing stuff in America up to his death but in the UK apart from Spanish Stroll um, nothing really um, I mean I've never seen this album before in the UK so anything from sort of 77 78 79 if it's uh, interesting then uh, I'll pick it up and this was only four pounds so uh, a bit of a no-brainer really so yeah Mink Deville now talking of one-hit wonders pick this album up Crusaders Street Life now 1979 Street Life to me is one of the best singles from that year and I can remember, I mean, I didn't have much money in 79, I was only 15, and uh, but I always had enough money for a good single. And, um, you know, I bought Street Life. I mean, on this album, Street Life's track one, and it's about 13 minutes long, and it's a great version. Um, I mean, it got updated for the Jackie Brown Tarantino film, sort of gave it a new lease of life, but uh, that Street Life is not representative of this album. I mean, uh, it's a real funk album. Um, with a few uh, vocalists um, chipped in but it's not um, like Street Life at all I mean this album sold really well and I can remember going in stores in Manchester and uh, I always saw this cover and I mean it's in Beverly Hills that I've seen um, and listening to this with fresh ears it's the sort of music I'm into at the moment, you know, funk and uh, disco, and uh, I'm really pleased to add this to my collection. I'm sure this is an album that a lot of people have got, probably if they don't play, but uh, yeah, give it a spin, it's a great album. So yeah, Crusaders.
and Street Life. Now, pick this album up. Parquet Courts and Sunbathing Animals. Now, I spoke about American bands last week and I just don't think UK bands, they're not stepping up to the mark at the moment, I don't think. I mean, there's such great music coming out of Australia and America at the moment. I mean, these sort of haven't crossed over for commercial success at the moment, but uh, I think it's a matter of time. Uh, this is the third album released in 2014. Um, they released an album last year, Wide Awake, that's a great album. And uh, yeah, pretty consistent when you listen to the back catalogue. Uh, I'd love to see these guys live next time they're in the UK I'll be going to see them I mean they're very much influenced I'd say I can hear a bit of Echo and the Bunnymen uh, a bit of Julian Cope uh, very, very influenced by the Strokes uh, I mean these guys are from New York but uh, yeah just a great example sketchy guitars and uh, great harmonies great vocal just a really imaginative new indie band out of America you know and there's plenty of them and uh, yeah, this is a great album, so really please pick it up. Parquet Courts and Sunbathing Animal. Now, pick this album up. Brothers Johnson and Blam. Now, Brothers Johnson, a nice uh, gatefold. In the UK, in 1977, I can remember somehow I heard Strawberry Letter 23 and it's always been one of my favourite records. Um, I bought it, only got to about 35 in the UK, a big hit in America, I think it was number five. Um, I mean these brothers, um, George, um, started playing the guitar when he was about four, he watched Elvis Presley with his dad on TV and his dad made him a guitar out of a milk carton, but his brother, Louis, uh, sadly, he's no longer with us. He uh, passed away in 2015. But you know, he played on uh, Off the Wall. He played on Thriller, um, Give Me the Night, George Benson. Uh, Call him Thunder Thumbs. Um, if you've, I mean, I was in a record shop a few weeks ago, and um, Rise by Herb Albert came on, and what a start to a record that is. And uh, there was three bass guitarists playing on that, and. Um, Louis Johnson was one of them. Uh, I mean, he played with uh, Paul McCartney, Phil Collins, Bjork, Herbie Hancock. I mean, the list is endless. And um, Brothers Johnson, they had a hit in the UK, 1980, Stomp. That's a great track. But um, yeah, the, uh, that was about it, really. I mean, this album came out in 78 and it was top of the uh, R&B charts in America. But they um, don't really have many hits. Um, Apart from Strawberry Letter 23 and Stomp, but uh, yeah, I mean, you see people on the BC talking about Brothers Johnson and uh, like I say, funk disco, uh, I'm all over it at the moment. So uh, when I saw this for four pounds, really, it was a no brainer. So yeah, really pleased to pick this up. Brothers Johnson and Blam. Now, from Amazon, I picked this album up King Gizzard and the Wizard Lizard. Now I showed a couple of albums by these guys last week and really getting into an Australian band from Melbourne. I mean, they've got about 13 albums out. They've got a new album coming out this month. Uh, my son's already pre-ordered it and uh, I think I'll be uh, ordering it as well. Like I said last week, you've got to uh, give them a listen because uh, very diverse. You know, they're doing jazz and they're doing sort of psychedelic music. I mean, this album's got four tracks on it. Um, each track's 10 minutes, 10 seconds long and it's just psychedelic sort of indie and uh, King Gizzard are um, a band I'm really into at the moment so um, yeah, really pleased to pick this up it's got um, not really keen on this sleeve but uh, sort of a bit of a do-it-yourself job but yeah a band I'm going to be picking uh, quite a bit of stuff up from so uh, yeah, really pleased to pick that up now, I'm still at the record fair. I picked this up. Weather Report. Great sleeve. Mr. Gone. Now, this came out in 1978. I think it's their eighth album. And uh, when it came out, really panned by the critics. I mean, one critic gave it one out of ten. 
and uh, I think they kind of felt that it was heading in um, too much of a disco direction. I mean, when I joined the VC, I wasn't uh, really clued up with Weather Report. I remember seeing Steve Carlson. I mean, he knows what he's talking about when it comes to sort of jazz fusion, and um, you know, he was praising Weather Report. I mean, the earlier albums um, have had a lot of critical acclaim. This one, not so much. But listening to this with fresh ears, really enjoyed it. So uh, you don't see a lot of Weather Report in the UK, but uh, yeah, really pleased to pick this up. So yeah, Weather Report and Mr. Gone. Now, picked up a couple of 12 inches. I like my dance music. And I love this sleeve. Look at those ducks. Yeah, Orbital. And this one's called Nothing Left. Now, Orbital was sort of a band that were sort of pioneers, dance music in the early 90s. Two brothers um, borrowed some tape decks from their dad, started experimenting. You know, and before they knew it, they were uh, sort of at the head of the uh, house dance music in the very early 90s, you know, and uh, they're named after the M25, they used to call it the Orbital, so that's where they got the name from. And, um, you know, they split up quite a few times, you know, like brothers do, but uh, they keep getting back together again and producing good music. Uh, they produce the um, theme music for the film The Saint. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been listening to quite a lot of Orbital recently, and uh, I just love that kind of close your eyes and drift off dance music, and uh, this fits the bill. So any 12-inch in good condition from that period, I'll pick it up, and uh, especially when it's got a sleeve like this. So, yeah, I love those ducks. So that's Orbital. And in a similar vein, really, dance music from the early 90s. Pick this up. Honey by Moby. So yeah, I mean, I've spoke about Moby before. I think he's um, really underrated. He's um, just one of those artists, anything he releases, I'm interested in. And uh, a good 12 inch in good condition by Moby. I mean, the album Play, um, literally played it to death. I mean, there's um, so many tracks on that that we use for adverts in the UK. It's, uh, really familiar album and uh, although he never sort of had the commercial success of that album he still does interesting stuff so uh, yeah anything by Moby I'm, uh, I'm always going to pick it up so really pleased to pick this up for a couple of quid Moby now I uh, on Sunday a week ago I uh, went to Manchester I was like I had some money and I just wanted to buy some more records so uh, heading to Manchester and uh, I got waylaid, um, saw an Adidas tracksuit top that I liked, so ended up buying that. So that took a bit of my money away, but uh, I had to refocus. And I went in this shop, oh, Clampdown Records. It's an independent record shop in Manchester and uh, it's been there for, you know, well over 30 years. Uh, the owner, Paul, I know him quite well. And uh, when you go in there, it's just like, uh, treasure trove of uh, Manchester memorabilia you know you can get all sorts of stuff in there you know and he directs you to stuff you might be interested in you know I had a conversation with him about um, a venue at the side of the shop called the Roadhouse um, sadly closed now but I mean Muse played there in front of about 25 people Coldplay played there in front of less than 50 people so uh, it was a really good venue in Manchester but like so many other places you know some of these venues just can't support themselves anymore for live music so uh, yeah it's sadly closed now but anyway back to the music so I picked this up solo album by Guy Garvey and it's called Courting the Squall now if you don't know who Guy Garvey is he's the lead singer with um, Elbow and uh, if you've watched my top 20 artists of all time Elbow, it's on Fiction, nice black vinyl. Elbow are one of my favourite bands of all time. Um, you know, the songs are just, they've got so many hooks in them. Um, I don't think they're very, really well known in America, but in the UK they're a big band. And this is just a solo album that he produced um, about four years ago. And uh, had it on CD, but uh, when I saw it in Paul's shop for £15 sealed, um, I had to buy it. So uh, really pleased to pick this up. Guy Garvey, 
and uh, coating the squall. Now, last but not least, pick this album up. I don't like paying £30 for records, but when it's Paul Weller, I mean, this is a sealed copy of his debut album. And uh, it came out, I think it came out in 1990. Um, Paul Weller, of course, from The Jab and The Style Council. I mean, The Style Council's last album, the record company wouldn't release it. It was uh, very influenced by house music. And uh, so Paul was going through a real uh, confidence crisis of confidence um, he got writer's block he didn't really write any new material for about 18 months and slowly but surely he uh, got his act together and got some confidence back and he went out on tour doing really small venues I mean I went to see him and uh, he was apologizing to the audience because uh, nobody knew the songs he was playing but I could hear that he had some great material you know he's got his mojo back and uh, this is one of Paul Weller's best albums, I think. So I was delighted to pick this up. So yeah, Paul Weller's first album, it's called Paul Weller. Now, that's it for me. Um, just finally, uh, my contest. I'm overwhelmed with uh, the entries I've had. Um, I think I've had 27 entries so far. People that I wasn't aware of were even following my channel. Um, some really great entries. Um, all of them have been great. Um, you know, I'm really um, humbled that uh, people have taken their time to, um, you know, do a video response and uh, it's still a week to go. So if you've not submitted an entry, then uh, you've still got a week to um, submit an entry. So um, go for it. So uh, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, there's a few contests knocking around, so I might be doing another video later in the week. So uh, that's it for me. Um, enjoy the rest of your week and bye for now.